The following is a CT scan of the brain performed without IV contrast. We start at the skull base and we scroll up, looking for any abnormalities. We can immediately see abnormality at the vertex involving the superior sagittal sinus and the surrounding sulci of the frontal lobes. Off note, there is a focal region of low density change in the left subcortical frontal lobe. Scrolling down, don't see any other abnormalities. The tonsils are clear of the foramen magnum and there is no evidence of tonsillar descent. There is no midline shift. No space occupying lesions or hemorrhage in the ventricles. and the remainder of the intra and extra axial structures are normal. So going back to the superior sagittal sinus, it's important to note that this is a non-contrast study. So the sinuses should be this color, sorry, this density. High density on a non-contrast brain has a few differentials. The first thing to think about is whether or not this could be acute hemorrhage. Acute hemorrhage or a clot in the dural venous sinuses appears hyperdense. The dural venous sinus here is expanded when compared with the posterior aspect of the suprasagittal sinus. As we scroll down, transverse sinus is non, not dense and it's the same on both sides. High density also extends to these vessels, coursing over the frontal lobes, more marked on the left, and there is high density lining the sulci of the adjacent brain. So taking into consideration the patient demographics, this is a 24-year-old female patient. Major risk factor for dural venous sinus thrombosis would be a, those patients on the oral contraceptive pill. To take this case further, we can perform a post contrast study of the brain looking at the dural venous sinuses. So that was what was performed. Again, starting at the skull base and scrolling up. In the region of abnormality that was identified on the non-contrast brain, you can see that the dural venous sinus anteriorly is non-opacified. It's also expanded. There is an empty delta sign. All this puts, fits together with the diagnosis of a dural venous sinus in the superior sagittal sinus. You can see if you look closely, that cortical reversal that was hyperdense on the non-contrast study is also thrombosed on the post-contrast study. If I just change the window settings a little bit, you can appreciate subtle low density changes in the left frontal lobe. And this is consistent with an evolving infarct. Look for Secondary features um, arising from dural venous sinuses, which would be intracranial hypertension. Patients with intracranial hypertension can get a papilledema with distension of the optic nerve sheath complexes, which we don't really see here. There is no flattening of the sclera. They can also get enlarged subarachnoid outpouchings. So we look at Meckel's cave which is here, and we don't see significant outpouching. Also, no, no tonsillar descent. So this is a neurological emergency. This requires urgent referral to the neurology team and the neurosurgical team for further review. Dural sinus thrombosis uh, needs to be considered when you can see an infarct in a non-arterial territory, such as here. 
This condition can present variably and patients can be well, they can be walking around talking, or they can have a mild headache. It can also present with nausea, vomiting, and in extreme circumstances can present with an unconscious patient. The risk factors include, um, the major risk factor would be women on the oral contraceptive pill. Other hormonal risk factors include pregnancy, those taking steroids, and hyperthyroidism. Hematological conditions such as protein S deficiency and polycythemia. Systemic conditions such as sepsis, dehydration, and malignancy. And also important to consider local factors such as focal infection or skull fractures. Management mainly includes anticoagulation to try to break down the clot. And in more extensive circumstances such as this one, we can consider other interventions such as um, catheter thrombolysis. Thanks.